Hi you guys, this is Nicole from My Carolina Garden and I, today I'd like to walk you around my property and give you a December garden tour. So some things are still looking good, some things are just changing, foliage color changes and that sort of thing. Of course we have our flowers dying back, but I do have some winter interest that I want to share with you and I also want to show you what I have growing and going on in my greenhouse. So as I show you my property, I'm going to toss up some comparison video so you can see how things looked in the spring and summer while we were in full bloom and we get to compare that to how things are looking now. Starting in one corner of my backyard, of course, you know, my little hostas, it's time for them to go, but that's all right. My hydrangea had been big and beautiful this summer, but nevertheless, it did get that black spot on it. But look at these couple of blooms that are out. It's just amazing how even in the winter when other things are looking horrible, a couple of blooms just come out and make you happy. And then over on this side, I have this golden sword yucca, which is amazing. The evergreen foliage. I do have multiple golden sword yuccas and they are all from the same parent plant. The dianthus in its pink color is still looking pretty, has looked pretty all year long. So I just am loving that dianthus. Then of course I have my sun patients here that really took a beating from the cold temperatures. But again, when you just get a couple of blooms that are left over, it just makes you so happy. So more evergreen over here. I can never remember what this one is called. This is the Podocarpus, so Roman candle with its variegated colors. I love that. This one's pretty new for me. I do have these zebra grasses here. So I have this one. And then this one in the back, which is older, but I transplanted them from a friend's garden. Their plumes are looking really pretty this time of year. This is purslane that I would consider to be a tropical style plant. I never had it as a perennial outside before, but it seems to be okay right now with even some new buds on it. So we'll see what happens. This yellow cypress I moved from my front yard I moved it a couple of months ago. I'm hoping that this brown foliage on the inside is something that's normal for it for this time of year. Uh, some of my um, arborvitaes do the same thing. Talk about some winter interest. This bench gives me winter interest simply because it is a pop of color in an otherwise sort of drab area. So these flowers, of course, moms are not going to stay with me. I don't even know if I'll plant them in the ground, but my little head succulent planter is still looking great. This is a passion flower. Someone gave it to me. It does have a problem of getting these caterpillars on it, hence the look of Swiss cheese leaves. I never had a passion flower before. The flowers were extremely interesting and now I can see it has almost like a fruit on it. So I'll do some research into how to make this plant thrive. This dianthus is also doing awesome. Super thrilled to have that bright, vibrant color coming out this time of year the phlox right here that has some pink flowers on it which started back in March in the freezing temperatures and now I can see we have a few additional little buds and flowers. This is the creeping moss phlox so it extends along the ground as a beautiful ground cover and I love it. I also love these red spikes. I thought I lost these this one in particular last winter we had a really bad early freeze and I thought that was the end of it, but no, I didn't dig up the roots and it grew back again. And then over on this side with just the crepe myrtle in the middle, this is going to be my amazing azaleas. This is a spring bloomer and I get magenta flowers on it. So this one is really looking big and beautiful. As we do a turn looking at my wonderful grass and come up looking at the pool, you can see how different it is over here than it was in the spring and summer. I do want to especially show you my banana trees that I have over here, my waterfall with the hibiscus and the palm tree in it right there, and then my entire flower bed that has, well, did have lots of tropical interest these blanket flowers seem to be very happy. 
I have purple heart here. They will die back for the winter. And then I have my canna lilies here, same sort of deal. These were cannas. This was a perennial hibiscus. And then I have some elephant ears in the back. I knew all of that was going to die back. But then I have my little succulent garden that's still looking good. Hopefully all of these things last beautifully through the winter, even if they're dormant. My banana trees, they do not like temperatures below 40 degrees. So even though on a warm day, you might see a new leaf emerge that wants to unfurl and it starts out looking beautiful, it will die back like this with the cold temperatures. I do have a regular tropical hibiscus that is in the ground that was not meant to be perennial, but it is. This is the third or fourth year I've had this one come back for me. And I do have my sago palm here. This one also lives in the ground. I don't have to baby either of these tropical plants to get them to come back for me. Now this is my oleander. My oleander, which you just see some diatomaceous earth that I had sprinkled on it left over here. We had a bit of an aphid issue on this, but the oleander actually has quite a few buds on it right now. I live in an area where it should live for me in the winter, but I am right on the line of where it's gonna be hardy and where it isn't. So for now, I do have a little blanket tossed over the roots of it and I am going to put a frost blanket over the top of it just to make sure that it does survive for me. Over here I still have lots of blanket flowers. They are so poofy, so much bigger than they were even at the start of spring around my bench. This is one of my other canna lilies, my favorite one because I love this foliage on it. But again it'll die back and then I will just trim it all the way down. So this is my waterfall. A couple of weeks ago, I had attempted to winterize my waterfall. Now what we did was we insulated the bottom of the waterfall so that the roots of any plant inside of it wouldn't freeze. And that's this right here. And then I covered it with this frost blanket so that I could save the sago palm and also both of the tri tropical hibiscus on either side. And then with an amazingly strong windstorm that we had, that blanket flew right off. So now I have to replace that. Here's another little bud coming out of a canna lily. So once again, as everything around it looks horrible and then that happens, it is sort of a lovely sight to see. This golden sword yucca was the parent, or is the parent plant to all the babies that you see around the rest of my yard. So I just separated a bunch more pieces from it. And so it's not looking like it's best shape right now, but it'll perk back up. And then I have a hookera that I had transplanted from my front garden because it just got way too much sun up there and it was not happy. And it seems very perky and sweet right now. And then... I have yet another oh hydrangea over here. This one looks so pretty. This one was a propagation from that parent plant, the parent plant that is suffering from the black spot. But this one had done really well over here, so I'm super happy about this one. And my seahorse that was living up on my fence next to my stars, that has to be put away for winter now. Heading in this direction toward my greenhouse, we have my wisteria vines. The wisteria looks amazing in April with all its purple plumes of cascading flowers. So I love having that on both sides of my privacy screen. And of course it does lose its leaves in the winter, but the vine structure I still think is beautiful. Interestingly, I still have some drift roses in bloom over here. And again, my blanket flowers, if I had done a better job of keeping it deadheaded into this late in the season, I'd have even more flowers than that. And that was the Montauk daisies back there. I really need to cut that back hard after this season because it got very long and leggy. My dahlias, I am on the border of where dahlias are perennial and annual. Sunshine Ligustrum. That is a happy spot in a winter garden, that's for sure. 
all my rocks that I have talked about in the past that have either come from other people's property in the north or these particular ones that actually came from a local rock quarry and all of these stones were once underwater. These were some Shasta daisies here. Purple heart, which again looks great right now, but it won't last through the winter. And then I have my Arborvitae, which just get the needles on the inside, start to turn brown this time of year. I like to shake them out. That's just why it's on the ground right now, but that doesn't bother me for this time of the year. Oh, I can't wait to show you what I have inside there. But just finishing up along the pool here, this is a perennial hibiscus. This is the starry, starry night hibiscus. More canna lilies, this style and this style right next to each other. And of course, my banana trees. It is almost, almost time to show you what is inside the greenhouse. But before I do that, I just want to pop into the front yard and show you some of the things that I have going on there. And then this is where we're going to finish up. As we come out into my front yard, I'm fortunate enough to have some evergreen items in one of my front flower beds. It's particularly the golden euonymus in the back, which is one of my favorite specimens. I love the coloring that it has, and I mean, of course, the fact that it's evergreen just makes it that much better. And here I have a Nandina, and I guess this is not the best plant to have. I hear that those berries can be toxic to birds. That was one of the items that was here when we moved in. The Golden Sword Yucca is another favorite, also for the same coloring as we have with the Euonymus right there in the back. And the firecrackers are still looking good. So we have some beautiful tonage, both with the flowers that are there and that foliage. And as we come around the front, I have four Laura Petalum bushes, but you can see it's flowering. The Chinese fringe flower, that's another name for it. So the Laura Petalum there, and then backing up around the front, I have a few more of those. But we're not going to skip over my holly, which has the berries this time of year, which just makes this one gorgeous. These, however, the Kaleidoscope Abelia, of which I have three. This is yet another kind of evergreen. I love these because they do change color with the seasons. The Verbena is still rocking and rolling in its pink tones, which I just love underneath my hydrangea. So backing up to my walkway that's leading to my front porch, Definitely don't have as much color as I did just a couple of months ago. But this sedum here is the stone crop sedum, which I always talk about being a prolific spreader. And this time of year it just has its winter color, which I adore. Cannot forget about my beautiful lantana that was, oh, just full of blooms. Now we're whittling down on the amount of blooms, but the bush is still looking pretty good. So I can't complain about having her in my front walkway. Of course, my canna lilies, you can still tell that they're here, but no more flowers for them. And that will have to get cut back, I guess, decently soon. My beautiful camellia that is the fall bloomer is losing a lot of petals between wind and rain, but that's okay. We still have tons and tons of buds. Ooh, there's a little bee. So the camellia is just absolutely awesome for adding that fall and winter color to your garden. I can see I have a little salvia still coming up. That makes me happy. Lots of other things like my lilies that were all here. I had tons of cone flowers all in here, echinacea and black-eyed Susans. Of course, my stones are still looking amazing, so they make me happy having them. Lirio that line the front of my flower bed, I started with maybe four of them and I was able to just divide that up over time. This was a beautiful hibiscus. I have a lot of blanket flowers in my yard and deadheading them is just a chore and a half. My canna lilies, they are sadly, of course, on their way out. So the fact of having any bloom left is quite amazing. And over here is my magnolia tree, which I think is about six years old. Very tall, very beautiful. 
and I think I'm actually going to make some projects with the magnolia leaves this winter season, like a wreath for my front door. So of course, while a lot of things in the garden start looking really bad in the winter, things inside the greenhouse start looking really good. So I've set it up in a way that for now, a lot of my potted plants can enjoy living in there and be happy. I can be happy with them. I can work around them and near them. And then over time, I will be propagating more things and all of that. So I'm extremely excited to show you what the inside of my greenhouse is looking like right now for December. So, the gravel base that I have in here now is obviously not fully completed yet. This is the first time I have had gravel inside the greenhouse. I have things like my Dragon's Breath Celosia. I have hibiscus in various pots in here. I have cordyline, purple heart. I have dianthus or diplodenia, I mean, in the back, both the yellow and the red and pink. That is all diplodenia back there. I have my poinsettias in here just for the extra color and atmosphere for me for when I'm in here working. My little planter here too. Now those pretty succulents still alive in there are looking really good. I have, do have some creeping Jenny that's in here, which is also looking good. Just a succulent that I wasn't sure how it would do in the pot in my succulent garden for the winter. And right near my old succulent garden, I had some um, what they call oyster plant. I have oyster plant in multiple places, including the fall planter that I had done for my front porch, which these are the pots that were part of that. So I moved the oyster plant into various pots inside the greenhouse so that it could have a chance to survive as well more cordyline and again you'll see the diatomaceous earth you know sprinkled on a bunch of different things more of the dragon's breath celosia i did dig up one of my canna lilies just so that it would be have a head start for spring when i'm ready to put it out into the yard this upcoming spring my begonia pot i just moved in here to see if i could get that to survive instead of that being an annual this is my fiesta hibiscus pot the fiesta hibiscus is just one of my favorites and so i do have buds on it i do have some flowers on it and this hibiscus just is a regular tropical that i had on my front porch is looking you know pretty good all things considered of course it's only been in the greenhouse for a few weeks now so that could start to change this is my pygmy date palm and then i have another sago palm that just lives in a pot so that's why i moved both of those in so december is an interesting time in the garden between what you see outside and what you can see inside the greenhouse as well so hopefully you enjoyed seeing some of the things that i still have looking good some of the things that i have really changing in their color and you know let's keep up that great gardening spirit so we can start spring feeling rejuvenated and get to spend a lot of time with our plants again thank you so much for watching and happy planting <laughs>